This is Vichuala Suchesnoob, learning and having fun with chess. So on move 8, we now have e5 attacking the knight. It has nowhere to go rather than its home square, practically forced. And we come to this extraordinary position where at the end of move 8, black has no developed pieces, no developed pawns, apparently the best computer engine move. How did we get here? Welcome to another episode of Chess Noob Game Review, where the focus is identifying how in a game, where, whether I win or lose, it could have been improved. Now, this game was a game of the Vienna Gambit, one of my favourite openings, if not my favourite openings of all time. And unusually, my opponent declined with Queen E7. Now I know enough about the Vienna Gambit to know that that can't possibly be a good move. And this was the case uh, in this game. However, let's have a look at this game. And there is a very, very interesting, frankly, amazing computer line in the early opening that's really worth having a look at. Now, Vienna Gambit, of course, e4, e5, and knight c3. Opponent uh, develops the other knight, the Falkby, knight f6, and Vienna Gambit, of course, is at immediate f4. Now, my opponent declined with queen e7, which uh, is a mistake. So Stockfish calls it a mistake, plus, you know, almost moving towards uh, plus two. And I had actually never seen this declination of the Vienna Gambit before this game. So I thought about what to do, and it looked like there was no reason why I just shouldn't take. And so this is one of the things about the Vienna Gambit, depending on what the opponent does, you actually just can just take that pawn. So I thought for about a full minute, took, immediately now threatening the knight, and I'm kind of calling their bluff. I'm basically asking, are you going to actually take with the queen? Because that surely was the whole purpose of that move. Now, if they do, now we've got uh, the full center with d4 attacking the queen. My opponent now opted to slide the queen all the way to the side of the board to h5, effectively, you know, asking for a queen trade. And, here I wasn't sure, was the queen trade any good? But I had a look at it for a while. I spent about, um, I think about, a, oh, how long? Yeah, a bit over a minute thinking that move. And I decided that this can't possibly be bad for me because if I take and then they take back, then knight is on the edge of the board. I've got the full center with a couple of pawns. I've got one knight developed. That knight's sort of in the middle of, uh, this basically on the edge of the board. That's not a good place for the knight. I thought this must be good for me. So I did take, and they take back. And if we look at the stockfish evaluation, yes, it's plus four and a half. So very good for white. However, note that we're actually materially equal. So the advantage is entirely in development and position. And this is actually often the case with Vienna gambit lines, uh, which means that it can be tricky to play once out of the opening into the middle game, and you can very easily lose your advantage, or black can regain their advantage. Now, what I played after this was knight to d5, uh, which is you know, d5 squares, often a great place uh, for the white knight, uh, here threatening the c7 pawn, which of course comes with a absolute fork of the king and rook. Uh, now that was the move I played, very human looking move. Now Stockfish finds an absolutely gangster line, um, which I really actually want to show. So the best move in this position is Bishop E2. Why Bishop E2? Well, the Bishop, of course, attacks the Knight, which is not defended. And where can the Knight go? He, he, he can't take their own piece. And in this position, and this position, obviously, it's hanging, it's developed. So the knight has only one position to go. So all the way back to f6. But look at this position. This is the Vienna Gambit idea. Pawn forward, e5. And let's have a look at where the knight can go. It's defended. These two squares are defended. And so the knight has only one square to go, practically forced. It is in fact the best engine move. So the engine, the best possible move for black at the end of move eight, no pieces developed, no pawns developed, absolutely incredible. 
absolutely amazing. Have you ever seen anything like that at the end of move 8? This is apparently the best possible position for black after that opening. Absolutely amazing. Now, as I said, uh, I didn't see that line. Uh, that's a, That would be a incredible line to play in a real game, I think. So I played an almost as good move, knight d5, and my opponent actually now finds the best response, which is moving the king. Uh, king now defends the piece, and this knight is kind of not in a very good place now. Um, because you know, obviously it can potentially now be threatened by pawns. Uh, as I mentioned before, we actually have material equality, and some inaccurate moves on my part now will see my advantage actually drift all the way back to uh, neutrality, to equality, and, and in fact I end up in a position where black is actually ahead. So I'm going to uh, put on feedback now. So I push that pawn immediately threatening the knight. Uh, so as you can see, Stockfish probably prefers development first. I think any of the, either of those moves would have been better. Uh, they jump back here, and really here I don't have very many options, because that's under threat, so I thought, look, I might as well just trade and then damage their pawn structure. So that was fine, but you can see from so plus four and a half, it's only about plus two, two and a half now. I thought developing the bishop surely should be okay, getting ready to castle. Uh, but again, you can see relative inaccuracy. Stockfish prefers the other bishop first. And you know, these are tricky positions. Like it's not entirely obvious to me why that is in fact best. Uh, now they lose some of their advantage again, so plus two and a half again, opening up the diagonal, um, attacking that pawn. So push that, uh, push that pawn, h3, again, a mistake. Uh, so, you know, so easy to, to lose your advantage. That bishop move, bishop e2, so develop with defense is better. So general principle, develop first if you can. They push a knight, you know, sensible looking move, but again, you know, an inaccuracy for the opponent. Here I develop, uh, push another pawn, and again, the general principle, develop your pieces first. So developing a knight defend would have been better. They push a pawn, a6. Uh, I knew that probably didn't do a whole lot, and Stockfish sort of agreed. Uh, here I decide to uh, long castle. I thought that was fine, but you know, Stockfish preferred immediately developing, so developing first, uh, and attacking that pawn. They bring the knight back, which was fine, and I now now push a pawn. I thought, you know, I can sort of push the pawn here. And just remember, that king's move, so there's no castling for that king. Um, they play bishop g7, you know, potentially, you know, maybe there's something there, I don't know. Stockfish didn't like it. Uh, and now I make the wrong pawn break. And the reason why this is bad um, is because of this. So I thought this was fine, but uh, be uh, because I thought, you know, if they, uh, I thought if they take and I take, then this pawn is now pinned to the king. So that's what I thought. However, if, um, if they take, and I take back, they now have knight g6, which attacks that uh, bishop, attacks that pawn, so bishop pretty much would have to go back, and now, you know, they can just take that pawn. It's pretty much a free pawn, because if they capture, they capture back, uh, and then now they're up on material. So that was why that was a blunder. Uh, however, it's not an easy to see move, I would say. Um, not an easy to see move. Uh, and uh, I uh, and they didn't see it. So capture captures, my idea is that that's now pinned, so I was fine, and they didn't see that move with the knight, uh, which is what they needed to do. Uh, uh, they moved their king instead, and now that gives me the advantage, take with the threat. Um, I wasn't entirely sure why they decided to um, to sort of go into that square. Obviously it was attacking. I thought maybe they could just take that pawn uh, with their pawn, but now I capture again. So that pawn has now captured two pawns all the way now on the seventh rank. D-file fully open. My rook's already on the D-file. It's, it's not good. It's absolutely not very good um, here for the opponent. So they move their bishop out of the way, which sort of gives us defense. That makes sense. But now I've got uh, sort of bishop to g2, attacking that pawn. Uh, you know, that rook can't come here to defend because that would be obviously a serious mistake. It's expected. They played rook a7. Uh, and now 
I play rook d8 with check uh, and uh, here the opponent opted to resign uh, with sort of a, a plus seven and a half plus eight position. Good game, GG. My big takeaway from this game, as you improve past the beginner stages of the game, you must learn a response to the Vienna game. I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.